are you? Are you lost? What's around you? What do you see? Let me move a little bit closer. Yes. Were you trying to talk to your mother? No. Who's in the caretaker's house? What's his name? Good evening. Is there anybody here with us? Is there anything you want to say to us before we go? Scared. The Bell Grove Plantation Bed and Breakfast, located in Port Conway, Virginia, is the site of the birthplace of the fourth president of the United States of America, James Madison. The plantation has been around to see the greatest events in American history and has been host to numerous individuals who were crucial in shaping our growing nation. The plantation has been home to numerous families and today each room is named after each prior owner and decorated to commemorate the time period at which they owned the home. Resulting from the long gestating history is an abundance of paranormal activity, which has caused the plantation to be one of the most haunted bed and breakfasts in Virginia. Previous visitors to the plantation have reported seeing full-bodied apparitions of Union soldiers walking throughout the home and plantation grounds, while others have heard mysterious footsteps and whispers echoing throughout the home. Then there is the lady in white, who can be seen looking out of the window of the Madison room, while others have claimed to have woken up to the lady in white standing over them while staying in the Madison room. Michelle Darnell, who has owned the bed and breakfast since 2011, further explains the home's history and paranormal activity. So Belgrove Plantation was um, established in 1670 and the first property was owned by the Conway family. They were here from 1670 to 1790 and then it was sold to the Bernard family, Hipkin Bernard family. Uh, John Hipkin bought it for his daughter Fanny and that was from uh, 1790 to 1839. 1839 it was sold to the Turner family. Carolinas Turner purchased it. He's a single guy looking for a wife so he had to dress up the house. He uh, expanded the house in the two uh, wings and also put in the porticos. Um, it was sold then to the um, Taylor Thornton family. That was from 1894, 1894 to 1906. Then it was purchased by the first of the two Californians that owned it. Uh, John Fremont Jack uh, owned it from 1906 to 1916. 1916 to 1930 was Williams, William um, Allen and Oh, Otto Brandt, I had to think for a minute. And then uh, in 1930, it was purchased by the Hooker family. They were here from 1930 to 1987. Uh, then it was sold to the Haas family from 1987 to the present day. Um, we've had all kinds of different uh, paranormal activity here at the house, um, from slamming doors, to footsteps, to whispers where you can hear conversations. Uh, we've seen apparitions. Um, we've had guests that have uh, encountered our kitty cat ghosts that have crawled up on the bed and purred and meowed for them. Um, we have a little boy ghost that uh, likes to play with different toys in the house. Uh, his name is Jacob. Um, we also have encounters outside, not just inside the house, but um, we have some in the caretaker's house. We have uh, children that play in the circle. Uh, you can hear them laughing sometimes. I have uh, some Civil War soldiers over by the uh, garage that kind of hang out there. there. There's four of them there. I've seen all four of them. Um, just all kinds of different activities. We decided to start off our investigation on the second floor in the Turner Room. This is where paranormal investigators in the past have come into contact with the plantation's previous owners, John and Mary Hooker. 
burn the hookers room. This is where they were when they were among us and living. We apologize if we've upset you. We come here with nothing but respect. We come here out of respect to you. If there's anyone that would like to speak to us tonight, we have a light on the chair. Could you flicker it to let us know that you're here? We're told that you all like to turn on our little um, torches. Can you turn one of them on for us? It's quite dark in here. We can't see. Is Mrs. Hooker here? Is Mr. Hooker here? If there is someone in the room with us, could you please make your presence known? Not coming in direct contact with anything during the session. During the editing process, however, we did notice the large orb that crosses across from my father and I during the session. So we decided it was best to pull out our Phasma Box program. The Phasma Box is a digital radio sweeping spirit box, which cycles through various internet radio stations at once to generate a white noise which spirits can use to communicate with us. Mrs. Hooker, are you here with us? Is it somebody else? Is it the woman Hello. in white? Hello? Hi, what's your name? If we're speaking with someone, can you come into this room and turn on one of our flashlights? I'm told you're very good at turning them on. Is that Jacob? Jacob, is that you? Is this perhaps Rose? Do you want us to open the door to this room? Do you need the door open to come in? Are you lost? Are you in this house of us? Are you outside? What do you see? What's around you? What do you see? Do you hear that, Ramsa? Bathroom. Mm-hmm. Keep that. Uh, can you go in there with me? We need. I think it's like the shower. Come on, let's go. You had the lights. As the two of us went into the restroom, where we both heard strange knocking. We decided to change up our tactics and pull out a digital voice recorder to conduct an EVP session to see if anyone was in there with us. However, our EVP session revealed no results. At this point, we weren't able to infer anything due to our lack of evidence other than maybe some plumbing noises. At this point, we decided to leave the Turner room and move over to the Sun room on the second floor. At this point, we were hoping perhaps we could communicate once again with whom we spoke to in the Turner room, or maybe somebody else. Hello, we've come out of that room. We've come over here. Do you all come say hello to us? Yeah, 
Yeah, I just heard you say something about my flashlight. Can you come turn one of them on? I have two of them. Can you just turn on at least one of them? My name is Ryan. I'm sitting by the staircase is my brother Remsel. And on this couch over here is my father who's also named Remsel. What's your name? Upon receiving that last message, we stopped receiving anything from the Phasma Box, nor did we feel that there was anything paranormal potentially happening on that floor. We tried everything in our playbook to see if anything was there, but to no avail. We resorted to knocking on walls to see if anything would respond, and even pulled out our digital recorder to do an EVP session once again. As we were taking a break in the library, we discovered something strange was happening near a chest that was built by a friend of the current bed and breakfast owners. So we're just sitting here and um, our lantern over here just turned off on its own. It could be that the batteries are almost drained. Or it could mean that um, someone or something just turned them off. Okay, we're going to turn it back on, and we're going to have this little device right next to it so that we can actually see you turning it off. So this would be like the Price is Right girl presenting my device over there. <laughs> Just turn on my periscope, please. It's already on. Ah. Uh, Let me move it a little bit closer. Yes. Can you turn that off for us again? Can you turn it on? Can you press it to turn it back on? Go get it. And go get the spirit box, which is attached to that red speaker as well. Okay. What? Oh my gosh. What? The periscope is going off. Go get the spirit box, which is attached to that red speaker as well. Okay. What? Oh my gosh. What? John, if you could turn that off again, I'll take off the lantern. To debunk this strange phenomenon, we decided to put fresh batteries back in the lantern. This way we could see whether or not this was happening because of simply dying batteries or something else entirely. Is that you, John? Can you turn off the lantern? John, are you in this room with us? Mm -hmm. Turn it up a little bit. Oh, Lights John. on. Hi, John. Is that you who turned off the lantern earlier? Why is the light on? Because you turned it on. Did you? Yeah. Turn John, can you turn that on again so we know it's you? Do 
John, are you here with us? All right, I see you turned on my light, John. Thank you. Right next to that light is a box. If you walk right next to it or wave your hand across it, it will light up with some lights. Can you do that for us so we know that our little device there works and I didn't just waste $80 on it? Did you build the cabinet? Okay, I see that our, um, our light is on. John, can you leave? Can you leave this place, John? Do this real quick. Do you see those lights right there? Do you see how if I move around it, it lights up? Can you do something similar for me? Can you get that little box to light up as well? It's very cool. If you're willing to make that little device light up like how I just made it, can you turn off that torch? Wow, thank you so much. Wow, that is fantastic. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you so much. If, if you want us to take down the, uh, the lamp from the table, I mean from the uh, yeah, chest, please turn the light on. I'll turn the light back on the lantern if you'd like. Or I can take it off the chest. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll take it off. I'll move it right now. It's off. Are you happy? At this point, we travel into the Madison room where we've been told that the apparition of a woman in white looking out the window is said to appear at night, along with the spirit of a young boy named Jacob. So someone's touching my arm right now. Is that you? They're, you're putting stuff off, Ryan. Well, because I have this camera. Which one, Ryan? Your right arm? No, my, yeah, my right. Yeah. Well, I think it's because this fireplace right here. Is somebody touching Ryan? There's nothing moving from the fireplace. But Who's poking my right arm? Jacob? Hi, Jacob. Er, you, you don't sound like a child. You need to prove to us that you are a child. The last time someone told me they were a child, they lied and ended up hurting me. So if I'm a little bit apprehensive, it's because of that. You get this feeling in your chest. Yeah. And it, it's really oppressive and really heavy. Like, they want you back there, mm -hmm. but you know that you shouldn't go. Is that you that just came near me? What's your name? Did you work in this theater? I heard Judy. Is there a Judy here? Judy. Judy, how old are you? Six? Are you behind me? Did you just touch Ryan? Did you push him? 
Did you just f hear that? It was like a dog barking back there. There you go. I'm out. Were you sorry for Jacob? Uh, what? And so, can you aim the light on my back? Someone touching you? Yeah. Are you touching the lion? There is usually a lady who's seen sitting on this bed. Are you her? Safe down where? Are you a man or a woman? I think it's a man. Are you the man of the house? Mr. Hooker? Someone in the kitchen? Jacob, are you here? If I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I, I'm just very apprehensive. Do you want to talk to us some more? Do you want one of us to leave? Say I want you. You said it too. Can you let us know that you're here by making that little box light up? The entry room. The entry room? Are you downstairs? What's your question? Child. Jacob? Rose? I heard Rose only hangs up downstairs by where John is. You see that? What? The blanket just moved. <laughs> what? I saw the, the quilt that's folded. Uh -huh. I saw it get tugged. What, what's Which direction? My direction or the other direction? Okay, like this right here, there's a little bump there originally. It was kind of like that, but I saw it like get tugged that way. Are you sure? Yeah. You gotta land on this bed real quick. More comfortable. Sometimes. I don't blame you. This is nice. That's me. Yeah, did you tell me to get off this bed?
say? That's that on your head? No, what did you say about the Peter when I said? Are you mocking him? That's that on your head? No, what did you say about the Peter when I said? Are you mocking him? That's that on your head? No, what did you say about the Peter when I said? Are you mocking him? He is here. Mitchell? Mitchell, is that you? Mitchell, is that you? There's a Mitchell here. Can you turn on one of my flashlights on the table? Touching it? Is there anyone in the room with us at all? Is there anyone with us? That flashlight is moving on its own. Trying to talk to your mother? Were you trying to talk to your mother? Are you still with us? Are you Jacob? Are you Jacob? Are you Rose? Were you in the other room earlier? Were you trying to talk to your mother? No. Are you Jacob? Are you Jacob? Are you Rose? Were you in the other room earlier? Were you trying to talk to your mother? Were you trying to talk to your mother?
Are you still with us? Did you hear that? I hear something. That's yeah. no. Wanting to shake things up, we've decided to take the rest of our investigation outside, where we visit two locations on the property, one of which is the slave quarters. Following that, we head over to the groundskeeper's home. Where not even the bed and breakfast owner doesn't even want to go in. Hello? There's someone here with us? Hi. Did you used to live here? Go down here? No, go around. Yeah, go around. Let go. Do you want us to leave? Okay. Yeah, we're, we're let you be. Good night. Say good night. Hello, my name is Ryan. With me is my father and my brother. What's your name? We've been told that you don't like visitors, so we're not going to go into your house and bother you. But since we're out here, is there something you'd like to say to us? We're talking to a house. What? Speaking to the person in the house. Let's move a little closer by the stairs over here. You know what's actually creepy? This I whole had a place. dream about a house that looked like this and it was abandoned. What's your name again? Closer. Don't worry, I have a protective pouch, so I'm good. I hear that you like to scare people away. Is that true? Actually, you just don't like people visiting you. Is that true? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna go now. Yeah, we're not here to bother you. But we know that you're here. That's more than enough for us, so we're gonna leave now. Let's go by. Let's go by. Let's go by.
So who's buried right here again? Uh, it's a family. We don't, we don't mean you any disrespect. We just want to know if there's somebody out here would like to talk to us. We just want to know if there's somebody out here would like to talk to us. We just want to know if there's somebody out here would like to talk to us. The strangest thing happened as we were walking back into the home. Through our device, we think we may have potentially come in contact with John Hooker. Oh, we got something. At this point, we began to investigate the basement, which was mainly used now as a museum and a storage area, but back in the day was used by the slaves for both cooking and cleaning purposes. What used to go on down here? What was down here again? Well, this was Kitchen. the area where the ladies used to cook and clean and things like that. So this is probably not the worst job for slaves back then. Is this a doll over here? Yeah, it's a doll. It said yes. The box said yes. Was this your doll? Was that your doll? Is there anything you want to say to us before we go? What? What? I'll repeat my question in case you misunderstood it. Is there anything you want to say to us before we go back upstairs? Scared. Scared. What we did before we went outside was set up a camera in the parlor room where we also left a laser grid to see if anything could possibly break it, which could show a potential paranormal abnormality. And at this point, we caught something absolutely incredible. As you can see, this is no way our infrared light because as we walk in the next clip, you can see the spotlight effects proving that there was no way it could have been any of us. To wrap up our investigation, we go back into the parlor to see if we can come in contact with anything or anyone that we may not have spoken to previously. those who we've spoken to. It was a pleasure um, communicating with you. We definitely learned a lot. But for those who we have yet to uh, met, this is your last chance to come over and um, speak with us. If, you, if there's something you want to say to us or if 
at least you want to make your presence known. I have a flashlight on the floor right in front of me. If you could just turn that on, we'll know that you're here with us. Who's in the caretaker's house? Oh. Do you know who's in there? You must know if the light's on. What's his name? Who is he? Who is the caretaker? Is he a bad man? Are you afraid of the caretaker? Does he mean well, but comes off as um, scary and intimidating? Is the caretaker a good man? When it comes to the Belgrove Plantation, the comforting rooms and spacious floors almost make you forget that behind every bend and corner lies a story. Stories of families who are forever part of the home, in death, as they were in life. Now, these mysterious spirits offer visitors a little bit more than they may have bargained for, making the Belgrove Plantation truly a sight which is out of this world. Next time on The Witching Hour. We need to get out of the room. Something's not right here. I've personally seen what they call a black mass, which I never believed in all that. Watch paranormal shows, nah. Until I saw one myself go up the stairs. The Witching Hour. All new episodes now available on Fairfax Public Access. Check your channel listings by visiting argosparanormal.com. Go for Sergeant Rick Ellsworth. And now, an exclusive sneak peek at the next episode of The Witching Hour. Alright, so we got like no communication upstairs when we came back down. We uh, are trying to think of something to do to kind of get them to talk to us without agitating them or aggravating them. They seem to only want to talk to us when we're, you know, when we bring a woman into the situation, like when I called Juliana. And it seems like the only time they would interact with Ryan and I was when we talked about how this place used to be a brothel. So with a lack of women, with a lack of prostitutes, I think maybe they'll communicate with a soldier or someone pretending to be a Confederate soldier. At prior locations, what we've done is we've played music and we've spoken to them as if they were still in that situation. So let's assume we're dealing with some residual entities. Uh, we could possibly, you know, trigger them in a sense and get them to communicate with us that way if they think that we're with them in that moment. So we're gonna try that. At prior locations we had investigated, what we would do if we were possibly dealing with any spirits related to the Civil War was play music from the film Gettysburg, and even sound effects of rifles and cannons firing to see if we would create any form of reaction. However, in the case of the Graffiti House, we didn't see any immediate uptick in activity until the SB7 spirit box was pulled out. Hello, what's your name? That was here. Hello, where are you? What's your name? Roger. 
Dominique. If your name is Dominique, can you turn off one of the lights on the chair right by me? Who's that? That's someone else. What'd you hear? I heard it say your name. Say my name? I'm Ryan. Um, with me is my brother Renzo. What's your name? Paul. Paul? Your name is Paul? Yeah. Can you turn on all the lights in the room? There's three little torches, also known as flashlights on a chair. Can you turn them on for me? Were you a soldier? What'd you hear? Crazy. I, I probably Ask it again. Say it again. Were you a soldier? Yeah. Fuck off. You heard fuck off? Did you tell me to fuck off? Yeah. Yeah. If you want us to leave this room, also known as fucking off, can you turn on one of the lights in the chair? We're not going to go unless one of them is on. It's a fair trade. Are you a confederate? Yeah, I do. It's a confederate. Did it say confederate? I asked it. Are you a confederate? We want to learn more about you, that's why I'm asking. Are you from Virginia? It said Virginia. That was Virginia. You're a Virginia person, right? Virginia, you're home? I know there's a female spirit here. Were you a prostitute? No. Is Melinda here? Melinda here? Is she downstairs with the little girl? Yes. Yeah. Melinda's downstairs with the little girl. Um, earlier we spoke with a Confederate soldier and someone told us that he was masturbating. Is he still masturbating? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll leave him alone. We'll let him do his thing, okay? I have three lights on a chair in front of me. Can you turn one of them on? Is it too hard to turn them on? Me too. I felt like it was getting, like the room was spinning. Well, it's like I just have, like my stomach is just not agreeing with me right now. Yeah, like I, I feel like the room was spinning. Yeah. Do you want to go to the other room? I'm actually done up here. You want to try downstairs? Mm -hmm. I mean, man, I don't feel good. I don't feel good either. Is that still wrong? Yeah. Did, so, did you make the room feel strange? Are you the one making me sick? If you're making me sick, you have to turn on one of those lights. Mm. It's like I have that 
preliminary urge to vomit. But it's, it's like, like it's, it's not like enough. In your, it's like vomit. in your chest. It's like right here, up there. Something. Is we we need to get out of the room. Yeah. Something's not right in here. Well, yeah. We're in full time. Bye. We're gonna leave. After we concluded our investigation on the second floor, we now decided to finish out the night on the first floor by first investigating the makeshift surgical ward. Sergeant Rick Ellsworth. Let's go for Sergeant Rick Ellsworth. Let's go for Sergeant Rick Ellsworth. Slink from the door. He did talk about that. Yeah, but that was like, yeah, it was like a growl. That was like a growl. I would say growl like a growl. Yeah. Uh, 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 was hurting. Yeah, like that was like pain. That was not like a whistle through like a door. Or anything. Yeah. Uh, you heard that? That was a yeah. groaning. What yeah. animals were those? That's really cute. How can you bring that up like now? Let's go back. 